Introduction Email marketing is hands down the most powerful and effective form of online marketing. Nothing comes close. Seriously, even search marketing with all its hype and tried and proven success can't even hold a candle to just how effective list marketing can be. It's easy to see why. Survey after survey, marketing firms keep putting email marketing at or near the top of their advertising preferences. Here are the reasons why. Through email marketing, you can get in front of the eyeballs of your audience members anytime and anywhere. That's right. You can be at a beach in the Bahamas somewhere writing an email update. Plug that into your email service provider and your audience, regardless of where they may be in the world and regardless of what they're doing, are sure to get your email. After all, most people check their email inboxes. Isn't that awesome? This enables you to sell more products. Since you have a de facto relationship with people who voluntarily got on your mailing list, you were able to keep the conversation going. You don't get just one bite at the apple to try to get list members to buy. Every time you send an update, you get a chance to convert some of your audience members into buyers. Through email, you also get to keep in touch with the needs of your audience. It's like you're plugged into what they need, what they're looking for, and the problems that they face. After all, that's the reason why they joined your mailing list in the first place. They're looking for solutions and answers that your list can provide. This enables you to keep a steady flow of traffic to your blog or online store. Now, this traffic may not convert right there and then, but the fact that it is constant enables you to get many bites at the apple. You don't just get a one-shot chance at converting online traffic. That traffic can come back again and again with each and every update that you send. If you've heard great things about social media, you might want to think again. Social media marketing faces many challenges because of the evolving algorithms of platforms like Facebook. As years go by, Facebook is sending less and less organic traffic. Even if you have a big Facebook fan page with a gigantic following, You'd be lucky for your page posts to reach a tiny fraction of your following. It's getting worse and worse with each passing year. With email marketing, you have a higher chance of reaching your complete mailing list instead of being at the mercy of these changing social media platform algorithms. It really all boils down to how well you write your headlines and how targeted your list recruitment is. If you did your homework and you played your cards right, you stand to reach a much larger percentage of your list audience. This is not the case with a typical Facebook fan page. Finally, with your own email list, you stay in control of your access to your audience. You can even download your list members' email addresses as you move from one email service provider to the next. This list is your asset. It's not going away anytime soon. Given all these amazing reasons, it's no wonder lots of old-school online marketers say the money is in the list. But wait. If you have just jumped in with bull feed into email marketing, I've got some bad news for you. You're probably going to fail. There, I said it. You can fail by putting up a list, but it doesn't attract many members. Attracting enough people to your list, but most don't open your emails. Building a huge list of people with many opening your emails, but most don't buy anything. The sad reality is that the vast majority of people who would try their hand at email marketing and very little to show for it. They spend money every single month on their email service provider only to come up empty-handed. Failure in email marketing comes in many different forms because people try many different things. Marketers also have many different circumstances and priorities. However, they all lead to the same place, very low to no income. If you want to get into email marketing and enjoy the amazing passive income it can produce for you, you are watching the best training to get you started. Seriously, no other training comes close because almost any other training out there tries to pump you up about email marketing. They get you all hyped up, but they leave you high and dry. How come? They do not take you through a systematic and methodical way of doing modern email marketing. Let me tell you, the old tricks no longer work. Get rid of them. Don't get excited by them. Otherwise, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Unfortunately, almost every other email list marketing training out there keeps rehashing the same stuff. In this guide, you are going to get just what you need to succeed in the highly competitive yet also highly lucrative world of email marketing.
Put simply, I will take you through the process of putting up a modern email list, one that is engineered to succeed from the ground up. I have trimmed off all the fat. There is no fluff in this training. Instead, you're going to get clear, easy-to-understand concepts that you need to wrap your mind around for you to be successful. Step number one, be clear on who you wish to market to. If you have a fuzzy idea of who your target audience is, you are going to fail with email marketing. You really are. You might as well give up now if you are chasing after some sort of vague defined market. Audience identification is crucial for niche list marketing. You cannot just target everybody. You have to drill down to a specific population of people who are trying to solve a fairly narrow set of problems. This is how you define their needs. By directly addressing the needs of these individuals, conducting enough consumer research and speaking their language, you would be able to convert a high percentage of them from website visitors to list members to product buyers. It is crucial that you go from raw traffic to dollars in your bank account. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. All the traffic in the world is not going to add one red cent to your bank account unless you target a specific niche market and give its audience the solutions that they are looking for. Finding the right audience. So how do you know which audience you should target? There are many different audiences out there. All of them cluster around a specific range of needs or problems. Well, it all boils down to commercial value of those needs. There are many problems out there that people are not going to pay top dollar to solve. Sure, people are looking for the right DVD set of headphones, but there is a limit to people's budgets. Different problems have different priorities. You need to find a niche that has enough commercial value. One way to estimate this is to use Google AdWords Keyword Planner and do cost-per-click research on keywords related to your niche. If you notice that advertisers are willing to pay a lot of money per click on those keywords, then you're in a good spot. Chances are, there is enough commercial demand for that niche. People are willing to pay a significant amount of money to solve problems related to your niche. It's also important to make sure that you are targeting a niche that is big enough. Sure, there are lots of advertisers willing to pay a tremendous amount of money for structured settlement keyword traffic. We're talking about more than $20 per click. The problem is, the volume of searches for that niche is actually quite low. Make sure the niche you are targeting has enough demand as indicated by Google Keyword Planner. This tool not only tells you how much advertisers are willing to pay per click, but it will also give you an estimate of the volume of searches for keywords related to that niche. You're looking for a nice combination of decent commercial value with decent traffic volume. Finally, you should also pay attention to competition levels. If you pick a niche that is extremely competitive with gigantic brands monopolizing pretty much all the search volume for keywords related to that niche, you probably are going to have a tough time making inroads. You should look for a niche that is somewhat competitive, but not so competitive that there's absolutely no space for newcomers. How do you do competitive research? Very simple. Just get all the Google Keyword Planner tool keywords for the niches you are interested in. Plug them one by one into Google search box and you will see the number of pages competing for those keywords. This should give you a clear enough idea of how competitive certain niches are. At the end of this process, you should have a short list of niches that have decent commercial appeal and enough search volume every single month. Consider these three factors. Find your customers online. I've got some great news for you. Regardless of the niche that you selected, chances are very high your customers are already online. You just need to find them. This doesn't mean that there is a dedicated website that caters specifically to your niche audience. Instead, your niche audience members may simply be asking questions related to your niche. Maybe they're sharing infographics or photos and videos related to your niche. Whatever the case may be, they're already online exchanging content. Your job is to find all these areas online and listen to them. That's the main key you need to do for consumer intelligence. Pay attention to the words that they're using. Pay attention to the solutions that they're already talking about. Understand the shortcomings of the solutions people are already aware of. If you spend enough time on these online platforms like forums, message boards, Facebook groups, Facebook pages, 
Twitter accounts, Reddit, subreddits, and Quora, or other question and answer platforms, you should have a clear understanding of who your audience members are and their expectations. You should also have a fairly clear idea of who your competitors are. I've got some bad news for you. Regardless of your niche, you probably already have competitors. This is not depressing news. Instead, you could use this to your advantage. Find the competitors competing for your target audience. Create a long list of them. Look for both direct and indirect competitors. Reverse engineer your competitors. Once you have a clear idea of who your competitors are, reverse engineer what they're doing. How do they speak to the needs of the people you're trying to reach? What do their websites look like? What kind of social media accounts do they have? What kind of content do they use for marketing purposes? How are their pages designed? You have to keep these and other related questions in mind as you research one competitor after another. After you've spent some time asking these questions and processing your competitors in a systematic and methodical way, you should have a clear idea of what your niche industry standard is. You would quickly find out that your niche competitors tend to look alike. They tend to address the same problems. They tend to have the same solutions. Their social media accounts tend to look similar to each other. Be mindful of this. Look at these similarities and understand that this is the industry standard in your niche. Whatever website or social media account or mailing list you come up with must fit the industry standard. Please understand that when you figure out their industry standard in your niche, it just gives you a place to start. You shouldn't start and end there. If anything, it just gives you a head start instead of fumbling around to come up with the right squeeze page or mailing list marketing materials for your niche. It gives you a place to start. What industry standard item should you look for? Pay attention to your competitor's squeeze page layout. This is a sign-up page your competitors use to get their target audience members to sign up for their mailing list. Pay attention to how they lay out these pages. What kind of pictures do they use? What kind of text do they present? How do they format their text? Do they tell stories? Do they show videos? Next, pay attention to their sales funnel layout. Your competitors have a standard way of getting people to sign up to the mailing list and also selling those list members to a wide range of products and services. Be aware of how they do this. How do they take prospects through the sales process? Understand that their ultimate goal is to get list members to buy something. Try to figure out how their sales funnel is laid out and how it seeks to convert list members. Pay attention to the kind of freebies or incentives your competitors offer to get people to sign up to their mailing list. Do they use cheat sheets or short reports? Do they give away full books? Do they attract list members by offering a special video? Do they promise some sort of insider information that people have to sign up for to access? Be aware of the specific industry standard digital incentive your competitors give out. You're going to have to offer the same. You can tweak this later on, but you need to start out with this type of incentive. Subsequently, pay attention to the updates that they send. Do they talk about news and events? Do they seek to teach email recipients a wide range of solutions? Finally, pay attention to the stuff that they are promoting in their emails. You can bet that your competitors are sending out emails intended to make the money. If you click on the right link, it would lead you to a product they hope you would buy. The same goes with services. Pay attention to these. Identify the most common products that they push with their updates. Again, this forms the industry standard in your niche. Look for the industry standard because this is where you will start. It doesn't mean you have to start and end your email list marketing activities with the industry standard. Instead, it just gives you a tremendous head start because you're not fumbling around coming up with your own squeeze page and mailing list strategy which might fail. Instead, by going with a tried and proven industry standard, you can improve on mailing list practices that already exist. You just need to perfect whatever it is your competitors are already doing. Step number two, find the right email marketing platform. This step is crucial. In fact, it's so important that it only comes second in importance to step number one. You have to have the right technology workhorse to ensure your mailing list business is a success. You have to understand that you cannot do email marketing manually. It's physically impossible. Even if you have a list of only 500 people, sending email updates to those people one by one is going to drive you nuts. You have to sign up to the right email marketing platform that would automate all mail delivery. You might think that this is a pretty simple process. It isn't. 
It's very hard to manually keep track of people signing up and unsubscribing to your list. You may be able to get away with it if you only have a handful of members, but once your mailing list starts to grow, it can easily get out of hand. Pay attention to key common features of email marketing platforms. Automated autoresponder sequence. Regardless of the platform you go with, they must have a way of enabling you to schedule emails to send to each and every one of your list members on a scheduled basis. For example, if somebody joined your list on Monday, they get the email update for day one. On Tuesday, they get the email update for day two. When another person signs up for your mailing list on Friday, they get day one's update, and so on and so forth. In other words, your mailing list platform must be automated and powerful enough to market to all your list members on an individually scheduled basis. This is crucial if you want your autoresponder email sequence to turn your list members into buyers. Powerful Universal Update Features Sometimes you need to send an update to all your mailing list. For example, if you're holding a sale or you have some important news to share, you need to be able to reach everybody at one time. Your mailing list platform must be able to deliver your email to its recipients. Otherwise, it's failed at its job. Unfortunately, not all email marketing platforms do a good job in delivering your email. Four powerful players stand out. Aweber, GetResponse, MailChimp, and Constant Contact stand out amongst the rest. These services have a solid gold reputation for getting past spam filters. They are so trusted by mail services like Gmail and Yahoo Mail that their emails usually get through. Deliverability is crucial, regardless of whether you are sending autoresponder text or sending a late-breaking update. Insist on email templates. Sometimes you just don't have the time to compose emails. To make things easier on yourself, you probably would want to use a template. This is an email that's been formatted a certain way. There are email systems that are purely template-driven, like Aweber. Others expect you to come up with your own email design each and every time. Others tend to push you to using text-only emails. Pay attention to squeeze page or email sign-up page builders. Let's face it, most list marketers are not very good at web design and coding pages. Unfortunately, if you want to come up with an online form, you have to know some basic web design and coding. Thankfully, some platforms have ready-made email list sign-up templates. You can just make certain changes to graphics, color, and font, as well as the text of these pages. GetResponse is far and away the best choice for ready-made email sign-up forms or squeeze pages. It really all depends on your needs. If you are looking for something that looks very professional and is easy to use, GetResponse is probably a good choice. If you know your way around HTML, you probably would be better off with Aweber or MailChimp. Consider alternatives to email list recruitment page designs. One alternative you can try for building your own squeeze pages is a service called Lead Pages. This online service enables you to use a two-step process to get people to sign up to your mailing list. This is a very powerful alternative to how email lists are normally presented on a page. Usually, people load a page, and they would see the email form where they can enter their email address and their name. They would then click a Submit button, and they would get their freebie. The problem with this one-step layout is that it doesn't really qualify people based on how eager they are for whatever it is you are offering to give your page visitors in exchange for the email address. Maybe they're just curiosity seekers. Perhaps they just want the freebie. Most likely, they didn't read the email form correctly. Whatever the case may be, they enter their email address, and you end up with a list squatter. This is a person who just stays on your list without reading your emails, or worse yet, buying anything. Lead Pages solves this problem by enabling you to use a two-step opt-in system. People have to click an add link to end up at a page where they can actually enter the email address. By using this two-step process, only truly motivated or genuinely interested list members are attracted by your offer. Sure, this may result in a lower subscription but you have more peace of mind as to the quality of list members you will attract. Step number three, decide on your list incentive. Let's get one thing straight. People are not going to sign up to your mailing list just because. It is not like they don't have anything else better to do. You have to give them a compelling reason to sign up for your mailing list. There has to be something in it for them. 
This is where incentives come in. You're going to give away something for free, which adds value to your potential list members' lives. They would look at these incentives as ethical bribes. You're bribing them to join your mailing list. It's not enough to promise that you're going to give them great information regarding the niche they are interested in. Anybody can make that claim. To create the perception of value in the minds of your potential list members, you have to step up and give them a very powerful incentive. Now the next question becomes, what kind of incentive should you offer? The bad news is that it depends. I wish I could tell you that there is some sort of one-size-fits-all or universal answer to this question. There isn't. The winning incentive varies from niche to niche. It also varies based on the sources of traffic that you have. Accordingly, you have to play it by ear. Ideally, you should offer the 10 common types of incentives that I'm going to lay out below. You should offer them in sequence. Once you've gone through all 10, look through your conversion records and pick the incentives that got the most sign-ups. That's the best way to know. Anybody could tell you that you should give away booklets or simply update people, but that's assuming too much. People who are interested in your niche might prefer something else. The best way to find the right incentive is to simply go through all 10 common incentives and pick the best performing type. Once you have found the highest converting type, then you can optimize as to which specific giveaway of that type works the best. I hope we're clear here. You have to go through this list. There are 10 common types of incentives you can offer. Here they are. Topic-based email series. This incentive spoon feeds list members answers to the common problems they may have. The value add is the content they receive in their emails. People who sign up for this type of mailing list incentive expect that you would be sending them pre-programmed emails that would lead them through common problems associated with the niche they're interested in. You would start at the beginning, then teach them a few things, after which you then send another email which teaches the recipient another set of solutions, so on and so forth. This incentive gives you a tremendous opportunity to build expertise. You're not laying out all your expertise at once. Instead, you are sharing to the recipient certain solutions, which gives them enough time to implement until the next set of solutions comes. Cheat Sheet A cheat sheet is just one simple document. It may be a one-page item, or it can run several pages. Whatever form it takes, it is topic-based. A cheat sheet just focuses on one specific topic and breaks it down. The cheat sheets are very popular because they tend to highlight easy-to-know or easy-to-overlook information. People are constantly looking for stripped-down info. They don't have time. They just want to scan something that would give them the right answers as quickly as possible. They are also looking for something that spells out the answer in the simplest terms. It's easy to see the value of cheat sheets. It's no surprise that this form of mailing list incentive is quite popular. Template Giveaway Templates are very popular because people do not want to screw around with solving problems from scratch. They'd rather work with an existing template that they can just plug in specific information. Of course, template giveaways don't work across the board. While you can probably get a lot of subscribers for resume templates, you probably won't get as many takers if the template addresses something that is so specific or so abstract that it is not really all that relevant. Templates can work, but it all depends on your mailing list niche. Complete Starter Kit you can compile all the solutions to a specific problem and give people access via an email link. Typically, this would involve people signing up to your squeeze page and being redirected to an online resource or a PDF file that compiles all the content the reader needs to solve a problem. This content can take many different forms. It can be a series of videos, audio files or links to PDFs, or even other websites. The big value add here is the fact that you are compiling all these answers and putting them in one place. It solves the problem the user has in a very comprehensive way. Step-by-step -step plan Oftentimes when people are faced with a problem, they simply do not know where to start. Even if they have a fairly general idea of the solution, they don't have a plan to attack the problem in a comprehensive and clear way. A step-by-step -step plan enables you to guide the reader to solve the problem effectively. Case Studies Everybody likes a good story. If anything, most people would like to see stories involving changes to other people's lives 
before and after something happened. These personal stories draw people in. They were able to connect on a person-to-person -person basis. You can use these case studies to not only build up your mailing list, but also to upsell whatever service or product your company is promoting. You can even upsell members who sign up to your mailing list for case studies to other mailing lists. The possibilities are endless. Case studies work in most niches, but this is not a slam dunk across the board. Keep that in mind. Latest and greatest news. This is my personal favorite. You have to understand that when you're giving away some sort of bribe for somebody to join your mailing list, you run the risk of attracting people who only sign up for the bribe. It doesn't matter whether you're giving out software, cheat sheets, booklets, books, templates, or whatnot. There's a chance that your mailing list might be filled with list squatters. This is the kind of risk you run. On the other hand, if you promote the updates that people would get by signing up to your list, there's a strong chance that the people ending up in your list would actually read your emails. They would not be list squatters who ignore the updates that you send. As you probably already know, you will only make money off your mailing list when people actually bother to open and read them. Showcase the latest and greatest news in your niche. Make the value of this information clear to potential list members. Unfortunately, this is not a strong value proposition for all niches. If you run a news website for a very specific niche, a newsletter would be a great way to build up your mailing list. On the other hand, if you are in a niche where developments tend to come very slowly or people have a fixed idea as to what the problems are and these don't seem to change, you might not get many takers for your newsletter. Offering the latest and greatest news works best for niches that have constant developments. Canned webinars. Webinars are video-based seminars. You can upload these on YouTube and spoon feed the URLs of these videos via email. You should also include a quick cheat sheet or a summary of the information contained in the video seminars with each of your emails. Let's face it, people don't really want to read a ton of text to learn something new. When given a chance, most people would rather watch a short video to learn a specific solution. This is why, not surprisingly, a lot of people love video-based seminars, as long as these seminars deliver solutions that people are actively searching for. These make for great mailing list incentives. Software While the Internet is filled with free software, it seems that people can't get enough apps, macros, or other software products. As long as they solve a specific problem people face, you can bet that offering this free software in exchange for emails will help you build up your mailing list fairly quickly. The secret to offering software as a list incentive revolves around specificity. The more specific the software is to a problem related to people interested in your niche, the higher the chance your squeeze page will convert. However, if you're offering some sort of generic software that people can get elsewhere or a software that addresses a vague problem that may seem to be related to your niche, you might have a tougher time. Keep that in mind. Also, please note that software is not exactly cheap to code. You can build your own software or, more likely, you're going to have to hire somebody to code it for you. This might cost you quite a bit of money. Graphics Packages Depending on your niche, people might be interested in downloading a free package of icons, badges, photos, or other graphical materials. While this makes for a great incentive for niches that involve online promotions, web design, web development, it doesn't apply across the board. For example, if you are targeting the weight loss niche, few people would be interested in seeing photos of fit people. They know they need to lose weight. They don't need photos of slim people to remind them of that problem. Instead, they're looking for other types of content to address their issue. Custom Consultation if you really want to turbocharge the number of people joining your list, you might want to consider giving out custom consultations. These involve people contacting you via Skype and you taking them through a problem. You have to tightly define the kind of consultation you have with people. Otherwise, you might sink into a time black hole. Seriously, there are people out there that just love to talk. They would check your ear off if you let them. Your consultation must be focused on a very targeted problem so as to minimize the amount of time you spend with a list member. Remember, there will be people who would sign up for your mailing list just to consult with you and then, once the consultation is over, they would unsubscribe from your list. Factor this into the amount of time you spend on custom consultations. 
Personally, I would research the most frequently asked questions so I would basically just copy and paste this material into the custom consultation. Tweak it a little bit and get that consultation down to as close to one minute as possible. You don't want to spend too much time on custom consultations. Ideally, you should outsource this to somebody who would copy and paste specific answers to common questions. Key takeaway for incentives. The key takeaway here should be obvious. Giving away a book or booklet for people to sign up to your mailing list is simply not enough. You have to figure out the industry standard giveaway for your niche and try to outdo the stuff that other people are giving away. Ideally, you should go through all 10 incentives above and pick out the most effective one. It all boils down to coming up with something better or something that has a greater perception of value. Avoid this problem. As I have mentioned earlier, there are going to be people who join your list just for the freebie. These are list squatters. To some extent, you really can't afford these people. You basically have to accept the fact that a certain percentage of your list will be squatters. Your job is to get that percentage as close to zero as possible. One way to nip this problem in the bud is to sell people on the value of your list. While your squeeze page should do a good job selling the value of your incentive, you should also talk about what they would get in the email updates you'll be sending them. You should be clear that once they join, they will be receiving emails. Highlight the value those emails contain. Otherwise, when people start receiving emails, they would either unsubscribe or worse yet, they won't unsubscribe. They would just take up space on your email roster. Depending on the email service provider you go with, you might get charged for the amount of list squatters you have. It may well turn out that only 1% of your mailing list of 100,000 people actually engage with your emails. These are people who actually open and read and click through your email. 99,000 people, on the other hand, are simply squatting on your list. Depending on your list provider, you might have to pay for those people. Avoid this unnecessary drama by spelling out the value of list membership in addition to the freebie you're handing out. Also, when people download the freebie, highlight the value of the email on the confirmation or freebie download page. The key here is to prevent people from being surprised by your email updates after they have downloaded your incentive. You really can't blame people for ignoring your emails if you focus so much of your time on the incentive and people don't get a clear idea that they will actually be receiving email updates from you. Step number four, create and feature top-notch list incentives. Now that you have a clear idea of what incentives you can offer for your list, the next step is to come up with incentives that will position your list for success. There are two ways to do this. As I've mentioned in step number three, you can just go through the list of incentives and pick which ones work the best with your particular traffic source. The alternative is to simply do what your competitors are doing. Pay attention to their incentives. Reverse engineer your competitors' incentives. Start with the industry standard incentive type by signing up to your competitors' mailing lists. Get a copy of their incentives. Study their materials very closely. Try to figure out their strong points and their weak points. Come up with something better by offering the same strong points while at the same time avoiding any of the weak spots. Let's face it. Regardless of how tight and awesome your competitors' incentives may be, there's always room for improvement. Figure out these areas and create something better. Remember, there are two ways to play this. You can actually come up with something objectively better, or you can produce something that is perceived as something better. Whatever the case may be, it has to be better. How do you produce a better incentive? This is the question that's begging to be asked. Now that we're clear that we have to come up with an incentive that either blows the competition out of the water or is perceived to be better, how exactly do we go about doing that? Here are some ideas. First, you can offer an incentive that is complete. In other words, when you study your competitors' incentives, they might be holding back on certain pieces of information. They might be offering really basic information. If you came up with an incentive that is fully complete, you will stand head and shoulders above your competitors. Word might even get around that the incentive that you deliver truly solves the problem that your target customers have in a very thorough way. Another approach you could take is to simply offer longer content. For example, if your biggest competitor is offering a free booklet that lists out 10 solutions to potential list members' problems, 
offer a booklet that offers 20, 30, or even 50 solutions. The key here is to come up with an incentive that, on face value, is so vastly superior that people can't help but sign up for it. Don't just go with doubling your competitor. Blow them out of the water by a magnitude of 5 to 1 or 10 to 1. If the industry standard is to offer 10 solutions, come up with 50 or even 100 solutions. Like it or not, people tend to equate longer products with higher value products. Of course, you and I know that this is not necessarily the case, but there is that mental bias. Alternatively, you can offer an incentive that is more engaging to people. For example, the industry standard in your niche might involve really complicated or jargon-filled materials for all sorts of products. When you read through this, it seems like you have to be some sort of brain surgeon or rocket scientist to make heads or tails of these materials. What if you were to come up with an incentive that is written in plain 8th grade English and actually engages people on an emotional level? Your incentive will blow everybody else away because your stuff is more accessible and easier to process. What use is a seemingly complete incentive when it's written in ancient Greek? Do you see where I'm coming from? Focus on engagement. Understand that the people who will be downloading your incentives are flesh and blood human beings with real problems. Start there. Finally, you can offer basically the same industry standard incentive as your competitors, but you packaged it better. When people read the same information but it's formatted in a nice PDF with lots of helpful pictures and everything is written in a well-spaced, well-formatted way, don't be surprised that people walk away with the impression that you have a better incentive. It turns out that you're offering the exact same information. The only thing that's different is that you formatted it in a way that is more accessible, easier to process, and most importantly, easier to act upon. Reverse engineer your competitor's squeeze pages. Now that you have reverse engineered your competitor's incentives, the next step is to design a better page to give away that incentive. Again, your notes and your competitors will come in handy here. You need to come up with squeeze pages that would blow everybody else out of the water. How do you do this? Well, you can come up with better design. Maybe everybody is using the same standard design. You can start there, but come up with different elements to get visitors to engage with your page better. You should also study how your competitors' squeeze pages focus, present, and position their incentive. Are they missing something? Do they forget to highlight certain things? Maybe they're just assuming that people who land on the squeeze page would automatically want the incentive. Come up with a squeeze page that shines a spotlight more clearly and more efficiently on your incentive. Finally, you can reverse engineer your competitor's squeeze pages in such a way that the value proposition this page brings to the table is clearer. You have to remember that people are always asking, what's in it for me? You have to answer that question loud and clear. The value proposition that you bring to the table must be compelling enough for people to want to leave their email address. Make sure to do this. Based on my many years of list marketing, I can tell you that the vast majority of list marketers automatically assume that when people sign up for their list, they would actually welcome the updates. This is why most list marketers fail. You cannot assume this. Like I said earlier, there's a certain percentage of your visitors that are going to be list squatters. If you're not careful, this percentage can keep growing until they form the majority of your list. You have to make sure to emphasize the value of the updates on your list. You have to do this right before they sign up by including such text in the squeeze page. You also have to do this on the confirmation page that they get. You should tell them that they're getting the booklet, template, book, or whatever incentive you're offering, but they're also going to be getting very useful updates. You may want to invest some time highlighting the value these updates will bring to the lives of your list members. If you fail to do this, you run the risk of building a list full of squatters. Worse yet, people might be surprised that you're sending updates and might consider your email spam. You probably don't need me to tell you why that's bad news. Do yourself a big favor and emphasize the value of the updates of your list because this is the only reason why you're giving out incentives in the first place. By getting all caught up in the incentive you're giving away, you end up sabotaging the success of your list. Make sure to keep your priorities straight. Otherwise, your list marketing business might go belly up sooner or later. Create a two-step list recruitment setup. A lot of list marketers are under the impression that the more people that join their list, the better. I'm telling you the whole idea of the more the merrier doesn't work in list marketing. 
In many cases, you'd be making a lot more money having less people on your list than having a bloated list of squatters or uninterested people. You have to make sure that only people who are truly interested in the value of your updates get on and stay on your list. One very powerful way to do this is to create a two-step list recruitment setup. A lot of list marketers set up their lead capture pages in such a way that when you load a page, you only need to enter your email address and your name and click the submit button. That's all you need to do. Automatically, you'll get a confirmation and you are on their list. The confirmation page usually has a download link to their incentive that you signed up for. This is going to be a problem because this can attract curiosity seekers. This can attract people who are not really all that interested, but are just curious as to the incentive that they would get. In other words, you risk attracting all the wrong eyeballs. You have to set up your list in such a way where the prospect has to click a button to get to the form. This added step filters out curiosity seekers. Your form gets in front of the eyeballs of people who are more motivated. They have to read an ad or a text that spells out the opportunity and benefit of your list. They then click through to get to the squeeze page form. In other words, you qualify them before you sign them up to your list. Either way, if you do this right, your form should talk about the benefits of the mailing list. This two-step process can go a long way in eliminating curiosity seekers and ensuring that people who sign up for your list are more likely to read your updates. Modern Email Marketing Modern email marketing uses a two-step email recruitment process. When people click through to the email form, they're essentially asking to opt in after they have become aware of the incentives. In other words, they already know what's in it for them. They are looking to establish a relationship with you. They want to give you permission to continue talking to them. Using this two-step process is less intimidating, and they also are given the impression that they're calling the shots. It's their choice whether to click through to the form or not. Another great benefit of modern email marketing's two-step email sign-up process is that this enables you to offer different incentives at different parts of your blog page. When people load your content, they see different ads for different lists. When they read the ad, they learn about the value that the list would deliver and then they click through to join that list. You get a lot of control over your mailing list because you can qualify people based on their interest. Different people with different needs would sign up to different lists. This segmented email marketing approach can lead to higher conversion rates. Instead of just dumping everybody who is interested in a wide range of problems related to your niche on one general mailing list, you end up with highly filtered lists speaking to different problems. You can then offer laser-targeted solutions to each of these lists and walk away with better conversions. Step number five, decide between updates versus pre-scheduled emails. The next question that you're going to have to tackle is when will you be sending out your emails? You have to understand that your squeeze page sets up your list members' expectations. If you do things right, your list members should not be surprised that you're sending out emails to them. They should expect this information. You have to decide whether your list is going to be an update-driven list or a scheduled list. People who sign up for update-driven lists expect emails to come at any time. Maybe there's late-breaking news in your niche. Maybe there is a hot development that needs their attention. Whatever the case may be, people who sign up for such lists expect updates to come at any time. In fact, they wouldn't mind if they received several emails within a day. On the other hand, there are lists that are expected to send updates every once in a while. Maybe there are no late-breaking developments. Maybe there is a shortage of news in your niche. Regardless of the reason, people expect to receive emails only if there is something really important in your update. Finally, there are many lists that involve pre-scheduled updates. These are usually tutorials or autoresponder series that people specifically sign up for. For example, if I sign up for an email list that is promising to teach me how to trade Bitcoin on a weekly basis, I would expect that I would receive a tutorial email with links to instructional videos once a week. Make sure you set up the right expectations because this will decide how frequent your updates will be. Timing depends on subscriber expectations. Make sure that your squeeze page and all other promotional materials set up the right expectations. Be as clear as possible. Do your readers expect to be sent only the most relevant and pressing information? 
Do they expect periodic emails as they step through certain information? I wish I could tell you that this is pretty straightforward, but it isn't. It really depends on the incentive you're using. It is also influenced by your target niche. Maybe you're in a niche where people expect rapid updates. For example, the cryptocurrency world changes rapidly. There are all sorts of late-breaking news. If you were to sign up for a mailing list specializing in cryptocurrency, you probably would want to be notified about the latest moves by global regulators or authorities involving Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Finally, you might want to consider the industry standard of your niche. If you sign up for your competitor's list, and you notice that they tend to have the same schedule when it comes to their updates, then you might want to start with that schedule. You should start there, but this does not necessarily mean that you should end there. Use their schedule as a starting base, and then tweak your email schedules based on the actual behavior of your list members. Pay attention to the following tips to make sure you maximize the results you get from your email lists. Optimize for maximum opens or responsiveness. Now that you've set up your mailing list, your main job is to make sure your emails are getting opened, read, and acted on. This is the essence of list marketing. If you fail to optimize your emails, then your list is dead in the water. It really would be. Why? What's the point of getting a lot of people to join your mailing list when they're not going to be reading your emails? If nobody is clicking on your links or reading your materials, then your business is practically dead. There is no way you can make money from your list when people are not taking action on the emails that you send out. You have to work actively to maximize the percentage of people opening your emails, reading them, and clicking on them. Each of these actions involves fewer and fewer people. You can start with 1,000 people on your list and end up with only 100 people opening your emails. Of those people, only 20 might end up clicking on the link included in the body of your email. Think in terms of this filtration process. Try to maximize the percentage of people taking action at each step. Start out with a large base of list members. Try to maximize the number of people opening your email and then work to increase the number of people reading through your emails and clicking through to your target website. How do you optimize for maximum open rates and responsiveness? It is actually quite simple. First, you need to be clear about your target niche for your list. Put simply, your updates have to be all about your niche. They have to be targeted to the set of problems people in your niche have. Set the right expectations with your squeeze page. Inform people before they sign up to your list that they would be receiving email updates. Clue them into the value those email updates will bring to their lives. Don't just play up the incentive that you're giving out so people can join your list. That's how a lot of list marketers fail. They put too much emphasis on their bribe and don't pay enough attention to getting their prospective list members excited about the emails they will be receiving. If you put too much emphasis on the giveaways and incentives you are using to get people to sign up to your mailing list, don't be surprised when people get shocked that they received an update from you. They might even be blind to the fact that they signed up to a mailing list. Your squeeze page might have emphasized or played up the incentives so much that your list members were under the impression that you're just giving away free stuff and won't be sending them emails. Set the right expectations with your squeeze page. Emphasize the value of the emails people will be getting. Clue them into the fact that they will be receiving emails. Make sure that there is a tight fit between the incentive you're offering and the needs of your audience members. Whatever incentive you're giving away, it must speak directly to the needs of your audience members. This is how you create value in their eyes. The more valuable, credible, and authoritative your brand appears to them, the higher the chance that they would open your emails and take you seriously. If it turns out that you are offering incentives that don't really directly address their needs, they are probably not going to be all that eager to open and much less take action on the emails you send. Another way you can optimize your email marketing is to send out only relevant and on-point updates or autoresponder texts. In other words, when people sign up for a specific niche, everything that they receive from you would talk about that niche and nothing else. If you send out updates that have nothing to do with what your list members sign up for, don't be surprised if a lot of them would unsubscribe. You shouldn't be all that shocked when people stop reading your emails. They may remain on your mailing list, but they don't do anything. They are no longer opening your emails. Make sure to send only relevant and on-point updates. This way, you preserve your chance of actually making money off your mailing list.
It doesn't matter whether you're sending updates or you have pre-programmed autoresponder emails being sent out by your system. Your stuff has to be relevant. Otherwise, your list members would start ignoring your updates. Make sure that everything in your email is consistent. It's not enough that your email talks about the problems of the niche your list member signed up for. Your emails must be internally consistent. You must remain focused like a laser in adding value to the lives of your list members. They should immediately see that reading your emails would add something to their lives. Finally, once you have people on your main email list, you need to work quickly to segment them. In other words, when people sign up for your general niche list, you need to start sending updates that would enable them to separate or filter themselves based on the specific subproblems that they are interested in. You can also send updates with links to low-cost products, so you can segment your list membership base into two camps, proven buyers and information list members. Once you have these two segmented lists going, you can then spend a lot more time trying to convert the proven buyers so they can buy higher dollar items. Step number six. Optimize your list by targeting your traffic source. Just because you have a lot of people on your list doesn't necessarily mean you will make a lot of money. There are a lot of list marketers with huge bloated lists but are struggling. The reason is that they made the all too common mistake of assuming that the more the merrier. That's not going to cut it in modern email marketing. You need to get the right people on your list. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of freebie downloaders on your list. These people don't even bother to unsubscribe, but the damage remains the same. They are not likely to open your emails and not likely to convert. How can they? They don't even read your emails. Optimize your list by using source-targeted traffic strategies. As much as possible, you should start with free traffic sources to optimize your squeeze page and your updates. By using free traffic, you should be able to get enough clues as to how to tighten up the incentive of your offering. Increase your squeeze page conversion rate and maximize your email open rate. Once you use free traffic to get this information, you're obviously saving money. The downside of this is you're going to have to invest time into this. You're still paying, but not in the form of money. Instead, you're paying in the form of time. Using free traffic, highlight your incentive. Use brand building content to get people excited about the value of your updates. Keep optimizing your squeeze page and your updates until you are confident that these can convert paid traffic at a high enough rate. Paid Traffic Targeting Strategy Once your squeeze page has been optimized by free traffic, start taking out paid ads. Now, I don't suggest that you jump in with both feed and place $100 a day ads on Facebook or Google AdWords. Instead, I suggest that you optimize your squeeze page and your mailing list to paid traffic using small, targeted ad buys. Start with $1 daily buys. Pay attention to your statistics. See if people are really converting at a high enough rate. Keep tweaking your squeeze page until your $1 ad buys convert at a fairly high rate. Once you've done this, start optimizing your email updates to boost your conversion rate. This requires a tremendous amount of attention to detail. You can't be lazy about this. You can't just set it and forget it. You have to pay close attention to your ad campaigns so you can quickly deactivate campaigns that are not working, while increasing the volume of ad campaigns that are producing a higher level of conversions. You have to be proactive. You can't just sit back and spend money in paid ads. Believe me, paid ad costs can spike up very quickly, especially if you are not paying close attention. At best, you would be throwing good money after bad on campaigns that are not working out. Step number seven. Optimize your squeeze page sign-up rate. In previous steps, I've gone over this topic at some level. Still, optimizing your squeeze page plays a critical role in the success of your mailing list campaigns that you need to go through specialized steps to ensure your optimization efforts are correct. It's extremely important that you follow the steps below. Don't miss any detail. Make sure you implement each of the steps below, otherwise you're going to be leaving a lot of money on the table. You have to understand that these optimization steps assume that you have already set up your squeeze page and have set out your updates. It also assumes that you've already optimized your squeeze page at some level. Here are further optimization ideas to try to maximize the conversion ability of your email list recruitment page. Ask and you shall receive. 
do direct outreach with your list members. These are people who have already signed up to your list and are in the best position to know about the things you can do to improve your squeeze page. They've already gone through the conversion process. They've seen your squeeze page, obviously liked something that they saw, and they signed up. Now is the time to reach out directly to them and ask for suggestions. Pick their brains regarding the things that you did right and any areas for improvement. Believe me, this is no time to assume that everything you've set up is perfect. You have to set your ego aside and ask for suggestions. There is always room for improvement. Make sure to offer some incentives for the feedback. This is critical. You have to understand that people have better things to do than to respond to your email. With everything else being equal, most people would probably just read your email and not bother to respond because there's nothing in it for them. They have other more important things to take care of. You have to make it worth their while to respond. With that said, you also have to be careful. Some people might give you sloppy or even misleading information just to get the incentive that you're offering. Pose some sort of incentive that is attractive enough for people to want to respond to your outreach. However, it shouldn't be so attractive that you get fake results. What should you ask feedback for? Ask for how your squeeze page can be made better. However, you have to break down the squeeze page elements one by one. You can't just say, how can I improve my email list recruitment base? That's too broad. Instead, you have to look at the different elements that go into your squeeze page, ask them, am I using the right graphic? Is the text easy to understand? Is the value proposition behind the incentive I'm giving away very clear? Similarly, you should ask about the quality of the updates you're sending out. More specifically, you should ask your list members, what improvement should I make for you to forward my emails to people you know? Don't neglect the power of feedback because oftentimes, the cheapest and most efficient way to get from point A to point B is a straight line. Ask your list members, but offer an incentive. It's also very important to make sure that you don't just jump on the first suggestion you get. Look at the total amount of responses you get and pay attention to the most common theme. If people keep talking about the picture on your squeeze page and only a handful of people mention the incentive that you offer, chances are quite good that if you change your squeeze page graphics, you might be able to increase your conversion rate. Look for these patterns. Don't get thrown off track by outlier responses. Warning. I wish I could tell you that you only need to rely on people's direct answers to boost your conversion rate. Unfortunately, this is not the case. In the back of our heads when people ask us a question, we tend to try to give them the answer that we think they're looking for. This is always the case. This applies across the board. Now, these suggestions can lead to all sorts of problems if you use them to guide the changes to your squeeze page. You have to pay attention to the most common answers that you get. Next, you have to cross-reference these responses with the actual actions people take. Actions speak louder than words. When you look at your squeeze page, please understand that you're not looking at one unified element. The squeeze page is actually made up of many different parts. There is the picture of the incentive, the text offering the incentive, the font, the size of the font, the color, the layout, among others. There are many different elements that go into that page. Change each element one at a time and pay attention to the conversion statistics. Make many different variations and then test these variations against your traffic. You should quickly see that at least one variation has a higher conversion rate than others. The improvement might be fairly small. It might even be 1% or a couple of percentage points. That's okay. You need to isolate that variation and make more variations of it. Run traffic through all the variations and see if you can improve your conversion rate. Keep going through this process of making variations, testing with traffic, picking the winner, and making more variations until no further conversion rate improvement is possible. At this point, you should make variations of another element on your squeeze page. It's important to make sure that you change only one element at a time. For example, you can optimize the image of your squeeze page. Once your squeeze page converts at a higher rate and can't improve any further, then start changing around the text and see if that has a positive effect. Move from one element at a time until the squeeze page converts at a fairly high and predictable rate. Cross-reference these element changes with the actual feedback that you get from your list members. Using these two pieces of data, you should be able to come up with a statistics-driven modification strategy.
Otherwise, you're just going to be taking your list members' words at face value. And it's anybody's guess whether their suggestions will actually improve your squeeze page's conversion rate. Use social proof. There's one simple trick that you can use to push people psychologically to sign up to your mailing list. We've all seen squeeze pages before. Typically, there's an email field, a call to action, and a submit button. There also might be a nice looking graphic on the side. Unfortunately, these squeeze pages are so common that people usually become blind to them after enough exposure. However, people can and do set up and pay attention when they see that their other Facebook friends have signed up to the list. Alternatively, they become slightly more interested to see that a large number of people on Facebook have liked the page that they're viewing. This is called social proof. Few people like eating at a restaurant that is empty. At the back of their mind, they're thinking that the food must not be very good because there's nobody eating at the restaurant. On the other hand, if the restaurant is full and there are people lining up to get in, chances are quite good that people would want to line up, even more because all these people simply can't be wrong. Do you see how group psychology works? You can use that psychology of social proof to boost your squeeze page conversion rate by adding the developer code of the biggest brand in your niche to your squeeze page. Facebook allows you to include the URL of a site on the code that it gives you to show Facebook likes. Embed that code on your squeeze page to give the impression that a lot of people already like your squeeze page. In fact, this trick is so effective that it shows the viewer's friends' names along with the thousands of other people who have liked that page. Piggyback on this social pool and give the viewer the push he or she needs to sign up to your list. Step number eight. Identify your list segmentation strategy. What is segmentation? Segmentation means separating your list subscribers into smaller sublists based on their specific interests or preferences. It's not enough that they are interested in your niche generally. It's not enough that they are looking to solve a certain set of problems. By breaking down their specific interests in your niche, you can send them more targeted information that could lead to them buying more products. You can also segment people based on their purchasing behavior. You are leaving a lot of money on the table if you keep most of your list members on your general info list. You can send update after update to this general list, and I can almost guarantee that the majority of the people are probably not going to buy stuff. Wouldn't it be a better use of your time to get this list of people to filter themselves by going on a buyer's list? Once they are on your buyer's list, you can then send better crafted or more targeted emails to get them to buy stuff. Implementing Segmentation Strategies To get people to filter themselves into sublists, send email updates with links to more specialized email lists. These lists target more specific needs. Over time, as you send one update after another, these sublists will fill up with people. You then need to send specific emails targeting the particular interests of the people on those sublists. This increases the likelihood that people in the specialized list would buy something because you are pushing products and services that cater to their particular interests. The second way you can segment is to get people to sign up to sublists from the beginning. That's right, you're not starting out with a general list. Instead, when people go to your blog or your website, they see different ads for mailing lists. These ads actually talk about specific issues and are very different from each other. When somebody clicks on a particular ad, they sign up for a list that only talks about the issues raised by the ads. They also only offer incentives that address tightly defined specific issues. This is a slower way of building lists, but it's more targeted. With everything else being equal, the slow growth rate of your mailing list can be offset by the higher sales conversions of people signing up to those specialized sub-lists. The third approach you could take involves selling lower dollar items. You start with your general list, and you send one update after another promoting a $1 product. When people buy these $1 items, they end up on your buyer's list. Behind the scenes, they are automatically unsubscribed from your main list. Given enough time, you should have a fairly nice list of people who have bought $1 items. You then should focus most of your time crafting high converting updates that target your buyer's list. This maximizes your return on effort. Instead of sending update after update to your general info list, 
hoping that people will buy a $20, $50, or even a $300 item, focus all your conversion firepower on a list of people who were tried and proven buyers. This saves you a lot of time and effort. You should still send updates to your general information list. However, you should space these apart and focus on value. You should also advertise only lower dollar items. If you do this right, you would be able to save a lot of money while making a lot of money. How is this done? First, you can easily see through your email list management system which of your list members are not opening your emails. You then prune these general information list members by automatically unsubscribing people who have not opened your emails. Whoever is left still opens your emails, and you still have a chance of converting these people into buyers later. If done right, segmenting your list into a general information list, then a buyer's list not only saves you time, but it also can save you money later. Be aware of your competitor's industry standard list segmentation. At this point, you should have already signed up to your competitor's mailing list. You should already know the topics that they send updates on. You should also be very familiar with the content of their updates. Pay attention to the common features of these emails and try to connect the dots. How do they segment their list members? Which of the general strategies described above are they using? Once you are clear as to their segmentation strategy, you might want to start there. Again, this is the industry standard. You're not exactly married to it. You can change it up later. You can make improvements based on how your list behaves. Don't neglect this segmentation strategy. Let's face it, people do unsubscribe. This is a fact of life. Don't think that just because you work hard to offer the right incentives to the right people that they would remain loyal to your list. People do sign up and after some time they unsubscribe. However, you can reduce your unsubscribe rate by simply asking people who wish to unsubscribe to change the update frequency of their membership on your list. Depending on your list automation software, you can offer list members a choice as to how frequently you will send them updates. Don't neglect this powerful tip because this can save your list. Instead of the vast majority of your list members unsubscribing after a certain amount of time, you can hang on to a large chunk of them and possibly convert them into buyers later. Why segment? Why should you segment your list? People find themselves in your mailing list for a wide variety of reasons. While they share a common interest in your niche, that's probably the only thing they have in common. They can all agree on the one problem your niche focuses on. Despite this, they might have different related problems they need solved. A problem like weight loss, for example, has many different parts. Maybe some people are struggling with weight loss because of their metabolic rate. Other people simply eat a lot and have impulse control problems. Others tend to have a certain lifestyle. Whatever the case may be, these people agree on the common problem of weight loss. However, they may have different sub-problems they need addressed. As a result, they might need different stages of the conversion process. Some may need more information before they commit to buying a product. Others are already clear on the solution, but they just need a recommendation they can trust. Obviously, you can't send the same message to these people and expect the same results. It's just not going to happen. For every one person who is ready to whip out their credit card and make a purchase, there are probably dozens if not hundreds of others who are still trying to make up their mind. Maybe they are looking for more information. Maybe they already have an idea, but they need to know more about specific solutions. Maybe others trust a solution but just need you to push them off that fence. Do you see the difference among these groups of people? This is where segmentation comes in. You need to set up a process where the people can be sent messages that will push them closer to the point of conversion. I've already covered the three strategies you should use to segment your mailing list. The following segmentation strategies are more detailed. Implement them after you've done the three main strategies listed above. You can segment your list members' emails using the following criteria. Location. If you tend to attract list members from many parts throughout the country, and you send out offers that can be regionalized, this may be a good option for you. Send only updates related to a specific region to people who live there. This makes the information more relevant to them, builds more trust, and leads to greater conversions down the road. Activity level. People who open your emails a lot have different expectations from people who casually open your emails. For people who are very big fans of your mailing list, 
you might want to ask them to sign up for another list in exchange for a reward. When they sign up for this other list, you can send them more frequent updates. And you can probably get away with trying to push them harder to buy stuff. They probably wouldn't mind because they already made it a habit to open and read your emails. Less frequent openers, on the other hand, can remain on your main list. You can send them updates at regular intervals. Lack of activity. If people sign up for your autoresponder series but don't seem to open your emails, you might want to set up an automatic reminder system. Depending on the email platform you're using, set up the system to send a reminder email asking the recipient to respond or ask you a question. This lets you know whether the recipient is completely ignoring your emails. If this is the case, then you can prune these list members. Since they're no longer opening your emails and you've already reached out to them to get them to open your emails, it's probably a safe bet that you can delete them from your subscriber base without any negative effects. Just send different updates based on incentives downloaded by the list member. As I mentioned earlier, you can run different email lists on the same blog or website page. When people click these ads to sign up to a list, they're actually signing up to different email lists. Usually, these different lists offer different incentives. Increase the conversion rate of these different lists by making sure that your updates are guided by the incentive downloaded by the list members. For example, if the list member downloaded a video, chances are quite good that this person probably would want to watch other videos. On the other hand, if this person downloaded a graphics template or a graphics package, they're probably more interested in similar types of content. Make sure that your updates speak to these different incentive preferences so you can maximize your sales conversions. Separate info list members from buyers using low dollar product offers. I've mentioned this above, but this is so powerful that I can't help but mention it again. Depending on your niche, it may be unavoidable that you end up with a general information list. You work hard to offer incentives, get people to sign up to your mailing list, and at the end of the day, you have a lot of people on this list. However, these people are generally just looking for general information on your niche. They're also all over the place when it comes to conversion ability. In this case, it's a good idea to send regularly scheduled updates with low dollar information product offers. Personally, I would push for really cheap stuff. We're talking about a $1 booklet, a $1 template package or whatnot. Let your system send out these offers and set up your email on this management software to unsubscribe people automatically who buy these $1 items. Here's how you set it up. It's actually quite simple. When you send out your updates to your general information list, these updates will contain a link to your sales pitch. When people click that link, they see a purchase button. When they purchase, they were actually taken first to an email sign-up page. When they enter the same email address they use to get on your general information list, your email management software system will automatically unsubscribe them from the general information list and put them on the buyer's list. This way, when you send updates to your general information list, your tried and proven buyers will not see those updates. This is a good thing because you don't want them to feel that you're spamming them by sending them so many emails. You should then pay more attention to your buyers list. Maybe you should send them updates with more in-depth solutions. Or you should send them higher quality information to get them to buy higher priced products or services. Segment your list based on mobile versus desktop. This is really non-negotiable. Over 60% of internet users view the internet through a mobile device. The problem is that these devices have different screen sizes. Make sure your mailing list segments your list buyers based on their screen preference. Depending on the email list automation software you're using, you should be able to automatically detect this. Regardless, your squeeze page must be mobile ready. In other words, it doesn't really matter what device visitors use to view your squeeze page, your page would look really good. It would look its best. Optimize your squeeze page for all environments. It shouldn't matter whether your audience is viewing your squeeze page through a mobile phone, a desktop, or a tablet. Conclusion Email list marketing is far and away one of the best ways you can market online. As I've mentioned in the introduction of this training, search engine marketing for all its innovation can't even come close. Mailing lists enable you to speak directly to the needs of your audience, regardless of where they are in the world and at any time. 
You can send them an email at any time, and you can rest assured that a significant percentage of your mailing list members will get to see your updates. Email list marketing is so powerful because it is based on a relationship. By following the eight steps that I've laid out in this training, you can learn how to recruit a lot of people to your mailing list, speak to their needs, and convert them to maximize your income. The best part to all of this is that mailing list marketing enables you to earn an income in an automated way. You don't have to actively manage each member. Your mailing list software will do it behind the scenes for you. Your list can continue to attract and market to members around the clock without your direct supervision. You could be taking a vacation halfway around the world, and your mailing list continues to generate cold hard cash. Sounds awesome, right? Well, the devil is in the details. This is why I've broken down email marketing into eight actionable steps. Pay attention to the steps laid out in this training. Carry them out, optimize your system, and scale it up. Whether you're looking to earn a few thousand dollars more per month or you're looking for seven figures, email marketing gives you the opportunities you need to earn your desired income. I wish you nothing but the greatest success.